It's War Dragon Time, RPW here with another event guide. I'm pretty excited because right now we have the Temple Raid going on here in War Dragons. And if your team is struggling, then be sure to share this video with them because we're about to go over the from everything from the basics to the things that everyone should know about this event and some strategies to help your team win. So let's go ahead and jump in without further ado. And again, if you don't subscribe, make sure you do because we've got a lot of exciting things coming to this channel. And of course, the first thing we wanna do is jump into that island where you are going to be able to do your PVPs and look at the rules. You should always remind yourself of what the rules are about. It's gonna give you everything that you need to know down to the nitty gritty. And it's a great time every time a PVP begins to go through and just remind yourself of what is there because you never know there even could be changes that you're not aware of. So I even myself will jump in and check out the rules as soon as an event starts. As soon as that island pops up, I check out the rules. Now, the next thing you need to know is these are the islands. You've got five different islands of five different elements. You've got your fire, your earth, your ice, your dark, and your wind. Currently, our team actually has a target on the dark island. So that this is on the dark elemental island, and you'll see the red target symbol there. That means the team is asking for our help to finish this island. And all you have to do is go in and set up attacks. Now, if you'll notice, there are other players moving up this path as well, not just ourselves. And in order to keep advancing, of course, we need to gain these VP points. Now, how do you gain the points? You're gonna gain these points by attacking other players. And if you'll click on each of the temple, it'll show you, I'm sorry, each of the checkpoints, it'll actually show you what your progression is and what you need to do to get to the next level. Now, after we finish this, we will then move on to the next island. And if you'll notice, they all look like they've not been done yet. And I actually have people actually attacking the fire island. You guys need to make sure that you, of course, target islands that your team wants to you know, go for that have not been done yet, but you also wanna make sure that if you're a player that you're looking at the team plan and you're only hitting what your team is targeting for you. The reason is because if you have everybody working on one island, you're gonna make a lot more progression than if you guys are spreading it out everywhere. You're gonna eventually lose that progress thanks to that storm cloud. This event makes up of seven different things. Number one, you're gonna have your five different elements as we mentioned before, which is of course your dark, your ice, your um, earth, your fire, and your wind. And then there's gonna be a um, storm that passes over each of these islands. And in the center, you're gonna have what they call the secret island because it's secret. It's because it's covered up in a cloud that prevents you from being able to see it or access it. In order to access this, you are gonna to have to finish every island. So that doesn't mean that you can hit, for example, the fire island five times and unlock it. You will have to at least unlock each and every island at least one time in order to show it. Now, the cloud. The storm that rotates around is a very important thing that your team needs to utilize when setting up their targets. The thing you need to know is what direction is this cloud going? The cloud will always go in a you know clockwise direction. So imagine a clock's hand going around and around and around. If it's at the nine o'clock marker, then shortly there later, about nine hours later, it's going to be at the 12 o'clock marker. So literally, it's going to go around in a clockwise motion and it's going to sit and hover over an island for three hours and then it's going to pass between those island islands for another three hours. Now, why do you think this basic math is so important? Well, it's because it's going to give you an idea of how much time you have before a storm will reach your island. So for example, this is an hour and a half from making that fire island because it's halfway in between the um, wind and the fire elemental islands. So we know that that fire island is going to be taken over within an hour and a half. Now, what does that mean when it gets taken over? It means that everybody that's on that island will be booted off and you will not be able to keep your progression and you will not be able to access that island any longer. So you need to make sure that when you choose those islands as your targets for your team, that you've got plenty of time to finish the island before you target it. Because let's say that there's, you know, it's the end of the night, everybody's used most of the resources, so it's simple attacks at this point, and you put one that's only three hours out. There's a big possibility that your team is not gonna be able to finish this island. So you're gonna wanna put something much further out. 
personally like to make sure that I um, utilize this to my advantage. Once a storm has passed over an island, it will create a supercharge on that island. Now, there is a good thing about this, but there's also a bad thing about this. The good thing is, it is going to mean that you're going to be able to get double the points when you go in and you defeat those temple guards, which if you're able to take them can cost you zero energy, which is a huge bonus to your own personal points. But remember that those are VP points for your team. So everyone needs to be a part of that. During this time, during the time that this storm is, you know, passed over and you have the ability to come in, you're going to have several other teams wanting to take that island as well, which is where the negative aspect comes in. It's going to be even harder to progress up there. However, if you get this done and you push further, you're going to be able to, of course, get major points for your team. Now that you know your team has targeted an island, what is it you need to do to help the progression of each island? There is going to be a specific manner that you will have to help your team. How is this? How do you make progress on this map exactly? Well, let's go over that. Now, the first thing, of course, is you must attack the other teams to move forward. By gaining, you know, PvP points against them, that's going to push yours forward, and it will also hold the enemy back. So choose wisely as to what teams you hit. Now, any teams in front of any Temple Guard checkpoints will not be able to be pulled back beyond that checkpoint. So keep in mind that whenever you attack players that are, for example, past that, that you're only going to be able to bring them back to that particular checkpoint not clear back to the beginning so every time you make a checkpoint you are going to be basically secured in that next you know quarter of the way towards the end of this you know unlocking this um, island when you're doing these attacks these are going to be what you call pvp attacks now keep in mind a very key note is that these pvp attack points that you get will be personal points for your own achievements these will not help your team when it comes to the VP points. These will only be your personal points. With that being said, it's good, you know, you want to help with these. Don't wait until the very end, of course, because without those VP points, I'm sorry, those PVP points, you're not gonna be able to push through the island. And the whole idea is to work through that island, get to the end, so you can unlock the ability to gain the VP points through the PVE attacks with the rest of your teammates. Now, what is PVP? versus PVE. Okay, so PVP literally stands for player versus player. This is when you're going to be attacking other teammates, or I'm sorry, not other, other teammates, but other players on other teams, or you might be even attacking the Black Bloods players, the bots. These are what you call your PVPs. Now, when it comes to the PVE, however, this is going to be player versus environment. That is literally what it means. So this is going to be what you're going to find in the very end, which is why it's very important that you help your team with those. And it can cost you zero energy, it may not cost you anything. And yes, you will get bonus points out of that, but this is what's going to help your team win. So remember the difference PVE versus PVP. It's very important. Now, once you get to the end and you've unlocked everything, you have to unlock each and every single checkpoint, okay? So the first checkpoint would be, you know, checkpoint number one, checkpoint number two, checkpoint number three, and even though it says 100% at this point, which is very confusing, you also have to finish the last checkpoint, which is the Temple Guardians, before you unlock the ability to go against the bosses in this island. Your team has progressively gone through and taken everything down to the temple as well, the very last piece. You're going to actually unlock the ability to go against these temple guardians. Now, the first thing you need to know is the energy consumption cost. Now, you can actually earn lots of free points in this part of the event. Take note on the left hand side, we've got Fang here, and he's worth a total of 200 VP points. Now, those 200 VP points also is a times 1.5 multiplier there. This means if you use the same element of that you know, particular island, you're going to be able to get a multiplier of 1.5. Pretty cool, right? But at the same time, if you'll notice underneath that, it says attack for zero energy. Whenever you attack this guy, it's going to cost you zero energy the first time. So as long as you successfully get through this, you're going to be able to get it with no energy. So it's basically like bonus amounts of points for you but it also is going to help your team now if for some reason you're not successful it will increase by two each and every time you have to retry 
but it will max out at a total of eight energy once you have reached eight energies. Now, you're going to have to dust off those old dragons because in this particular, you know, part of the event, you will have to use a dragon of that same tier. And of course, this is why I said you guys really need to get your dragons prepared for these events because this one's probably going to be around for a while. Yes, you can use divine dragons as long as their stone matches that tier. And all of these will be available to you. The moment you go into attack, it will bring up your entire roster of available dragons that you can utilize in that attack. So the guesting game is out of that for you. However, if you've got a little extra sigils at the end of this season, maybe you can grab a cheap dragon to help you in your levels, if, depending on where you are having issues. Now, let's go ahead and jump into a Temple Guard attack real quick with you guys. Now, if you'll notice here, this is an orange level attack. Now, I do have a Divine with a Rider on it. This is going to give me the ability to be just a little bit stronger. As well as this green tier, I was able to grab up a green tier dragon and utilize this to make me a little bit stronger because a lot of these dragons, I know you want to save back, for example, for the feeding event. So these divines are great for this as long as you have them. Don't waste your sigils on these. Only do this if you already have them or you have extra, you know, at the end of the season, you can grab up one here and there. Otherwise, you're really going to want to work on those dragons. And I suggest start getting those dragons for any future feeding events that might be on its way. Okay, so let's move on. Next most important thing you need to know is that whenever you do these attacks, um, you will not be able to go beyond what you might have already accomplished when, you go to, when it comes to your dragon tier. So for example, the highest I have bred is an emerald tier. So I'm not going to be able to go beyond the ability of being able to take anything in the emerald. And this is going to be the case for everyone. So if you've only, let's say you're only a level 40 and you can only go up to a gold, then you're not going to be able to attack anything beyond that. And the reason is because you will be alone on these attacks. There is no way to invite anyone. So you will have to only be able to get your team those extras. Now, this doesn't mess you out of points because you will be able to utilize the regular PvP attacks. This is just to help your team and seeing what its strength is. And this is a great way to test you know, what players or what teams actually have an abundance of alts because a lot of alts don't tend to be as strong as what they are. You know, they might have a strong base or a strong buildup or a high level, but they may not have the same dragon tier that someone's main account would have, for example. Um, in most other PvPs, this is something that you can utilize, but in this one, that is one that the alts won't be able to take advantage of. However, again, this is just on the PvP, I'm sorry, the PvE end, which gives you your team VP. P points. But when it comes to your actual player progression, you're going to be able to go in, for example, right here, attack another team. And when you attack them, this is going to help you out. Now, what I suggest is when you're choosing a team that you're attacking is either A, attack the team that you're seeing hitting you a lot, or B, hit the team that is coming close to you. Now, when I say a team that you see hitting you a lot, you might want to confirm that they're on the same island as you. If they are, for example, hitting you like over and over and over again, they might be hitting you from a whole other island. So make sure that you're seeing progression actually on that island before, you know, you go looking for that attack. All right, so here we go. This is how you're going to be able to gain your points. Now, mind you, you're going to see here when I get finished that there is no bonus points because I used a wind elemental dragon. However, in another situation, just a dark elemental dragon because we are on a dark island and I was able to get a um, dragon elemental multiplier of 1.25%. I know that's not a lot. I know it's not a whole lot, but if you have the dragons of that element, utilize them because that 1.25% will add up. It really is important to know what elements you're utilizing or you're hitting so you know which ones to use. Now you're gonna have three hours during this time to be able to take this you know, temple. It will unlock for a total of three hours. Now. Mind you, in this picture, you're going to see the actual temple here. Just a quick overview of some keynotes of the temple. Now, when you breach the temple, it does not mean that you've unlocked it. There will still be some bots you'll have to go through and take. Once you've done that, you will actually see what looks like a boss on the front of the island. This is when it's time to attack those guardians. And you will only have three hours in order to do it. It used to be two. They did increase it to three. 
So be sure to tag your team, send out emails, jump in line, let them know that there is some time to get in there, get those done. And I would even warn again every hour, maybe even the last 30 minutes. Now remember, when you go in here, you will be on your own and they will be tier-based attacks. So like I said, get those dragons ready. You can take junk riders and put on those, things that you didn't get above a certain point, things that are waiting to be leveled. You can even put you know, gear on those and cheap gear that you might gather along the way, as well as the ability to you know, up those up with runes and level those up in feeding events. Now remember, also these will be energy consumptionable, but you will have zero energy the first try. Now once you've taken this and you've actually finished it, that island will actually unlock a little part of the secret island that's in the very center. Now this is the Shrine of Elements. This is where the Shrine of Elements sits. And if you unlock each and every one of these five islands, you're going to unlock the Shrine of Elements. Now this Shrine of Elements is going to be a lot like what you see at the end of each and every island. However, there is no time limit. You can attack and attack and attack all day long and you are not going to be limited on time. So if you, let's say, unlock this super early, you're gonna be able to go back, hit other islands, and still come in and hit these as well. Now these are going to be different and much tougher than the Guardians. Again, of course, the feature is you have to fully unlock all the islands in order to be able to unlock this shrine permanently, okay? So this shrine, like I said, is the Shrine of Elements, and this is where the Temple Raid comes in. Now you're going to be able to come in here and attack these, but they're not going to be red, blue, purple, etc., 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 going all the way up. There is only going to be orange and harbinger in this particular situation. So if you don't have anything above, you know, that goes clear up to harbinger, you're only going to be able to take the five different elemental bosses in that orange realm. Important thing to note and keep in mind here is that whenever you do these attacks, you will only be able to use the same tier dragon as that base which when you're doing orange that means you're going to, have to use orange dragons now why is this important well the reason this is important is unlike ourselves it's not got the same rules you know it could have much higher than usual towers on that island so it could be hit you know one hell of an attack to get these done not to mention you'll see the four other elemental totems on that base making it very challenging if you're not utilizing you know the same elemental dragon I say strong, I'm not even kidding guys, because any elemental towers that are related to that boss are going to get out or give out a significantly more attack power against you and the damage on your dragon. So for example, in this situation, any um, you know earth elemental towers are going to be the boss towers, which will put up four times as much normal damage. Now each and every one, of course, has their own elements. So one of the things you can look at right here. The fire um, boss is going to have fire turrets. The dark boss is going to have your trebuchets. Your ice boss is going to have your ice turret. Um, your wind is going to have your archer. And your earth is going to have your ballistas. Oh, and I'm sorry, the dark will also have your cannons. So on these, this is good to know because whenever you go into the fire turret, you may want to take a fire elemental dragon that has fire turret resist. Or when you go against the wind boss, you might want to go and utilize something with archer resist because those are the ones that are going to be the strongest when you go into attack. Now, remember, you can only defeat each guardian tier once per player. So this is going to be very, very limited. If you can only take orange, you're only going to get to be able to utilize those VP points one time. Another big thing I would like for everyone to remember is that it's not designed for you to be able to get this with one dragon. This is designed to push you to train your smaller dragons and in some cases, you will have to use up to three total dragons. So another thing you really should know is that inners don't count on PVE, which means player versus environment. When it comes to your team points that you're earning from either the Temple Guardians or the Shrine of Elements, do not waste your inners by applying them during this time because they will not count. Yes, you're going to be able to get the 1.5 multiplier on the Guardians, etc., etc., but you're not going to be able to utilize the inner fires itself so use these in your pvp attacks which means use it to help you progress up the island faster or use it to of course prevent the pro you know progression of another team so outside of that do not use these with that being said if you do manage to get all of the orange you're going to have the ability to unlock a portrait and these portraits are going to be the bosses 
Now, I don't know for sure if they're going to bring in new bosses eventually once we've done all five, but each and every time we do this, we're going to have the ability to have, you know, the chance to unlock a portrait of each element. Now, if you get all the Harbinger, you're going to be able to get another one as well, which I thought meant was going to be like something that actually moved and changed, but it's actually just beefier and bigger. I'm not a huge fan of them because, well, maybe because I'm a little girly for that. I'm not for sure. But if you like these bad boys, this is going to be how you're going to be able to collect them. You're going to be able to go in, take your orange dragons. You get all five of those orange um, shrine guardians. Then you're going to be able to unlock one of that week, whatever one they've you know made that week. And then, of course, if you can get all the harbinger, you'll get the beefier one. Now you've unlocked every single island. You got through the shrine what's next well you may go through the islands again you can earn more personal points for yourself by attacking the other players and doing the um, guardians all over again and you can actually get more vp points for your team so don't give up just because you've done five islands and you unlock the shrine and you're in first place doesn't mean you've won you still need to keep pushing and prevent yourself from losing that spot so you can go back and re-hit the islands all over again you can do all five you can hit your favorites depending on you know, what maybe your team has the most dragons and elements wise. Um, it's completely up to you. But don't give up just because you've unlocked and finished all five. All right, guys, that is pretty much it that you need to know when it comes to the basics of this event. Before we wrap up the Temple Raid um, official guide. Let's go ahead and go back over the five tips because to me, these are extremely important. You know, if you're going to be successful as a player or as a team, these are going to be good ones. Number one, know your target. Knowing the target that your leadership set is important, and they've made this much easier. So when you go in and see that target, be sure to hit the target only. Number two, prep your dragons. You know, you are going to be doing tier-based attacks. So if your dragons aren't prepared for this, you're not going to be able to make it very far. And then, of course, number three, the storm forecast. As a leader, make sure, or as an officer, that you know where that storm is coming from before you hit. Remember, it's three hours over the island, three hours between. Number four, every time you come in, whether you're an officer or you are a player, check the team plan because it may have changed. And last but not least, the number five tip on there, which is to me the most important, realistic targets. Setting realistic targets for your team. Don't put something that's only an hour out before the storm hits. And don't take a player that if they defend, you're not gonna be able to win. These are my five tips. I hope that everybody is enjoying the temple raid as it comes in. And of course that you're making all the points you wanted to help you get progression on those divine dragons. Everybody loves earning those goodies. Now here's the thing guys, if there's anything that I didn't cover or that you might have a question about or something that you would like to add or even, you know, maybe even argue a point on, be sure to put that in the comment section below. I love the feedback. It's absolutely awesome. I love how much you guys are supporting my channel and I really, really appreciate you guys. So be sure to go down the comment section below and add this in. Now we do have a QA, and a which is long overdue coming up soon. So if you wanna add anything for the Q&A for this specific event, you are welcome to add that as well. All right guys, that is it for today's video. But before you leave, of course, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit that bell so you don't miss out on future videos because you will get notified. And right now, as much as I love the live stream, I just don't have a set schedule. So if you don't want to miss out on those live streams, be sure that you put that bell up there so you don't miss out on them. All right, guys, that is it for today and I will see you guys next time.